How's it going everyone? It's Mike with This Old Hot Rod. Feels like it's been a while since I've done a video, even though it's really only been a week. Uh, it's Wednesday, no, it's, is it Wednesday? It's Tuesday. Oh boy, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday afternoon and late in the day and uh, it's Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend. If anyone is on the East Coast or is up in the Northeast, you know what type of weather we had. It was crap weather all weekend from like Thursday till Monday. It was just rain. And really couldn't do much outside, so I spent a good portion of my weekend in the garage. Happy Memorial Day. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I hope people were able to get out and at least do some things. I know up here in the Northeast, there wasn't much to do other than hide from the raindrop. I spent some time working in the garage on the 34. Uh, I have a lot of parts up on my paint rack. Everything's sandblasted, wiped down, and ready to go. Uh, I ended up pulling the cowl vent out of the cowl, which is here. Got that sandblasted. So as a lot of you guys know, I bought a new sandblast cabinet. I bought a Scat Blast 940 DLX. So it's a 40 inch cabinet, 28 tall, 28 deep. And I was able to blast my axle inside of that. It was a little tricky. It was a little tough getting down to each end because it was kind of on an angle. But I was able to do it and it came out great so i want to thank andy kohler down at kohler custom in pennsylvania he redropped my axle for me he adjusted the camber on it so i got that back from andy probably about two weeks ago but i've just been busy haven't had a chance to do anything with it i just got it sandblasted over the weekend as with a lot of the parts i remocked up the front axle and suspension with the steering to make sure that the adjustments that Andy made weren't going to affect the spindles with the steering arms and my tie rod to make sure everything was still going to work the way I needed it to. I needed to put it back into the car to make sure it was all going to still work the way we had set it up when Joe and I had helped. Uh, Joe and I, Joe had helped me drop the steering arms. So that's all set. Uh, I ended up having to make some spacers for my wishbones. So my wishbones are Model A wishbones that are split, obviously, and they have a two and a quarter inch throat. The axle boss is a two inch. So I ended up making some quarter inch spacers, which are hanging up on the rack here. I made those just out of steel plate with the hole saw. Uh, so I got those made, got those all set up in the front axle and got everything bolted in and uh, everything's good to go. So I took everything back apart, sandblasted everything. The only thing that's not up on the rack that is sandblasted which i still have to do a few things to are the spindles i ended up pushing the bushings pressing the bushings out of the spindles and then sandblasted them i ended up having to reinstall the old bushings to make sure that everything was going to work the way it needed to work i then pressed the bushings back out of the spindles and the spindles are just a little dirty at this point i had to remove a couple of the broken grease zerks that were in the spindles those are ready to go. I just don't have room on my rack. So I have the spindles and the front drums. Once I get those sandblasted, once I get the spindles and the drums sandblasted and epoxy and paint, I can put the entire front back together. The only thing I haven't painted yet is the steering column and box. It's already been sandblasted and epoxy. It's just not painted yet. So I need to get that done. And then I can put the entire steering back in with the complete front end and get the front wheels back on and get it sit on the ground. The rear axle's back in the car. Um, posted up a picture the other day. So you can see the rear axle's back under the car. What I needed to do was I reinstalled the axle. I ended up having to reinstall the entire rear end in order to get a measurement for the ladder bars that I need. So I've kind of been weighing out my options. I ended up getting a set of ladder bars, old chrome ladder bars from my friend Pete Flavin. And unfortunately, unfortunately the ladder bars that I got from my buddy Pete are just too short. They're too short and they're just not going to work. So. I've been looking into just buying the materials to build a set of ladder bars and I needed to put the axle back in the car 
and get my measurements to figure out exactly where my cross member needs to be for the mount and then how long my ladder bars need to be. What I think I'm going to do because I'm so busy with work right now and I have so much on my plate. Ali planned a vacation in June. We're heading down to Florida for four or five days. So I have a lot of work coming up and then we're going to be gone for the week. Uh, I just I just haven't had time. So what I'm going to do is I spoke to RJ Speed Shop in Missouri and he's going to end up making me a set of ladder bars. They have a kit that they sell which is very reasonably priced. If anybody's doing a hot rod and looking to do a ladder bar setup, which is what I need to do, they have a full kit that they sell for 350 bucks. And that's it's 100% ready to go. All you have to do is mount the cross member and then mount the and put the weld the mounts onto the rear axle tubes and that's it. So I'm going to go that route just because of time and then also I've kind of been weighing out the costs of buying the tubing and the clevises and the mounts and the steel and me having to travel back and forth and I've been so busy with work I just haven't had time. I, I just know it won't work out time wise if I were to build it myself. So I'm going to have I'm going to order a kit and have that shipped and I'll get that installed. It'll just it'll be a lot easier for me and it'll keep things rolling. So once I get that in, I can get I'll have the rear axle pulled back out and all ready to go. I won't have it painted yet, but I'll at least have the tubes cleaned off so I can weld the mounts and I can get that kit installed so I can get this car back on the ground on all fours. And at that point I can start focusing on finishing up some other things. So uh, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like I said, I have a cowl vent out. I have everything for the front end is ready to go. My axle is ready to go. Uh, I have all new brake parts for the front end, so those will be able to get put back in as soon as that's done. I'm working on the gauges, trying to figure out exactly what route I'm going to go for gauges. Um, that's going to be one of my next things after I get the front and rear axles set in place. And then... Um, I'm gonna start my buddy Joe's gonna we're gonna start laying out the interior panels and get things going so he can uh, kind of just start picking away at some of the interior panels but um, for the time being it's it's getting the suspension getting all the parts painted it's just been a a ton of work getting everything sandblasted and ready for paint so but I'm finally to a point where like I got my grease cups um, I gotta get those sandblasted and painted. So it's just a few little things here and there, but I'm finally to a point where I can get things done now that I have a really good sandblaster. So if anybody is in the market for a sandblaster, TP Tools, that scat blast cabinet is is killer. I do wish I bought the 48-inch cabinet. I should have. Uh, I, 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 truthfully, I, I typically go over and above and try to buy something even though I don't think I'm going to need it. I didn't. Uh, it would have been easier to do the axle with a 48 inch cabinet, but at the end of the day, I was able to get my axle done and uh, just keep moving forward. So, I'm gonna get some epoxy. I'm gonna get everything wiped down with acetone. I'm gonna get some epoxy and I'm gonna get these bits and pieces all covered in epoxy. And as soon as that's dried, I'm just gonna spray them with finish. I'll have everything up there ready for finish and ready for uh, to get bolted back into the car. So. I want to say thank you to everybody who commented on the last couple videos. And when I say commented, I mean positive comments. As a YouTuber, and I know there's a whoa, we're leaking. I know there's a lot of people who could probably say this. You never know what the response is going to be when you put out a video. You hope. You hope that the response is going to be good, but you just don't know. Um, this time of year, I try to drive my coupe as much as I can, the 30. And as you guys saw, we were out cruising around in the coupe and having fun. And I wanted to do a quick, you know, I wanted to do a video of it to keep some content going on the channel and. Let me show you guys what we do as far as the tornadoes and we're a really active car club. All of us guys are about the same age. We're in our 40s. Might be a 
a uh, couple of guys a little bit older but we're all roughly the same age we all clearly have the same passion we all love these early hot rods and as you saw there was a Chevy in the mix so we're not die hard Ford guys by any means we got out we took the cars out obviously as you saw we had a blast um, we did like I said 150 miles that day that's a long what just fell? Oh, well, I have brush. That's a long day in that little coupe, let me tell you. One of the guys drove his car up to New Hampshire after he had a blowout on his trailer. Um, I didn't because it was a long drive and there was a chance of rain. So I decided to drive, trail my car up. I'm glad I did. Um, and, it, and again, I wasn't even planning on having my car actually that weekend. So planning on just driving up and doing some videotaping. And I drive my car often from, from my house here in Middleborough. So if anyone's ever out and about, shoot me a message. If I can meet up with you one afternoon, if you've got something going on. I look, I'm always looking for a reason to get out in my coop. Alley isn't always available, but I try to at least get out in the coop two, three days a week. If, and then the weekends. You know, Matt was talking about him driving his car and he just wants to get out and drive it and I definitely feel what he's saying you know you just you don't want to worry about filming and cameras and you just want to get in your car and just go for a drive because you enjoy it and I'm I'm that same way I drive my car a lot and I don't always take my camera with me but I know you guys appreciate it when I do it, so um, so yeah that's it see what we got there. Probably end up at about six. Yep. So this is the 401 product. This nascent product. This is the same epoxy that I've used for a while now. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this mixed up, and then get some seal around these parts. So yeah, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, get, get back in the groove on the 34, and so I can get this thing going. I also want to mention that I want this to set up for five or ten minutes. I also want to mention Matt had mentioned something Sunday on his live, on his Sunday service, his live, his live feed. And I apologize to those people. I told you guys I was going to do a 5,000 subscriber giveaway, and I haven't yet. So maybe I'll try to get that taken care of this week. Anyways, Matt had mentioned something on one of his last videos. He had did, he had done. Um, a video about the LeBaron estate in the racing history. I've been talking to a couple of uh, gentlemen local to me and I have plans, hope maybe this coming weekend, to meet with a gentleman who is a long time hot rodder. He is in Cool Cars with Square Roll Bars. He's in that, that book. Uh, his name is Mark Rogers. He watches this channel from time to time and I'm gonna do a sit-down interview with Mark he was here the other day for about four hours just talking sitting down on a stool just telling me about hot rodding at the early days in the early 50s right up until today he's still building cars so he's 79 years old and he's still active in this hobby and he is just a wealth of knowledge. And I had said, you know, do you, would, it, would it be okay? Can we set up a time that I come and talk to you? We sit down. I put on a camp, put a camera on, and you just talk to me like you're talking to me now. Because these stories are historical. You know, some of them are funny. He's just got stories just across the gamut of hot rodding in Massachusetts in the 50s, 60s, 70s, talking about racing at Sanford and the cars that he's built and uh, the cars, he's he's owned some iconic 
hot rods hot rods that every one of you guys knows about hot rods that have been in magazines hot rods that have come from uh, you know California and just he's owned so many of these historic hot rods hot rods that were just hot rods back in the day but now they're they're looked at as historical cars and Mark has he's one of those guys that just he's he knows about a lot of cars that are out there and he's come across a lot and he's bought a lot of cars he's he's sold a lot of cars and he still has a lot of cars so He's a guy that I'm going to be talking to real soon. I'm going to be sitting down. I'm going to be doing an interview. And that's going to be a, a new series on the channel. Uh, I have a few other people that I'm going to be talking to. And just just getting some of the history. Massachusetts and New England. The Northeast. <clears throat> hot rodding history. And uh, that's going to be coming up pretty soon. I haven't done the video yet. But we're, good. we're talking about. It's just a phone call away. I just have to call him. I just have to find the time to get up there. And again, I've just been super busy. So, uh, But him and i'd like to sit down with george as you guys know that is yet to happen maybe his good friend tim tim if you're watching i'd love to sit down with you uh definitely brad who i purchased the 34 from i'd love to get his history and just some of the things and the stories all these guys have incredible stories a lot of them are hilarious uh and it's just i want to get them on record so there's almost like an archive of some of these stories that go untold that people just don't know about and when these guys are gone the story's gonna be gone and i don't want the stories to be gone i want to be able to preserve this history and and what these cars mean to people now and what they meant to people back in the day so uh, so keep an eye out for that that's gonna be coming up pretty soon i'm gonna throw a sweatshirt on i think i have one in here i hope yeah i got a work shirt I'm going to throw this on, get my respirator on, and get these parts sealed in epoxy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that set up and flash. After that's done, I'm going to come out, I'm going to mix up some white paint, some diamond white paint. And I'm going to get these parts sprayed in white. See you soon. No, I can't do that. i to leave that on. And I was able to cut and bend up a new seat back for the seat so I'm gonna get this in epoxy too if I can find room to do it
wasting material, but I don't want it to set up while it's in the gun still, so I have to clean it. that epoxy set up for the next 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to go eat some dinner, come out, and I'm going to spray the finish. And I'm just going to leave it as is until probably tomorrow, and I'm going to stop bolting things together. What's going on everyone? I'm back in the garage. It's been about 45 minutes. All the parts that are on on the rack, which is there, and you really can't see them that good. All the parts, they're all, they're, they're basically dry to the touch. They're just still a little, little tacky. But I'm going to get the paint mixed up. The paint is an acrylic enamel. It's an 8-2 to 1. So I'm going to get this paint mixed up. And I'm going to get all these parts shot with probably three or four coats. So I'll take breaks in between, obviously. And uh, I'll just film the process. So after this, I'm done for the night. I'll get everything put away tomorrow down in the big shop so it's out of the way. And then what I'll do is I am going to pull the rear axle assembly out from under the car. And then I can get the tires off and get things cleaned up on the rear axle assembly. I can get the steering column and steering box up here and get that painted as well. Sealed in epoxy and painted. And then uh, I'm going to kind of be able to start putting things back together. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do for gauges and <clears throat> the reason I say that is I'm going to need to modify the dash where the gauge cluster goes. So I'm still trying to figure out what gauges I'm going to use <clears throat> because that's going to determine how I'm going to modify the, get, uh, the dash. So uh, I haven't nailed that down yet. So but Hopefully within the next few days I'll know, know what I'm going to do and then I can get to work on modifying the dash, drilling the holes, figuring out where the gauges are going to go, getting some type of a layout done and then um, I can get the dash. Once it's done and ready to go, I know where my gauges are going to go. I can get the dash painted, get the dash bolted in the car. Um, I ordered a new rear view mirror, a new cowl vent handle because mine was in really rough shape. Same as the mirror. Uh, and I just, might as well, the rest of the interior is going to look nice. I just kind of want, you know, the little things to look good. Uh, I'm going to get to work on chopping and welding and getting the garnish moldings all set so I can get those sandblasted and painted also. Those are going to be white to match the interior. I have all the garnish moldings for the car except for the windshield, uh, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, I need to get underneath the car, up underneath the cowl, inside. I'm going to paint that white, so I need to get that done also, so I can get that done this week. I'm definitely planning on trying to get quite a few things taken care of this week, and then into next week. I'm hoping I can get this car, like I had said, on back down on all four wheels, rolling with the suspension in place. And at that point, I can get the motor, uh, start taking the motor apart, and figure out what i got to do with that motor. Uh, and then go from there. So hopefully this thing will be kind of starting to look like a car again pretty soon. See you guys. Mm. We're going to get back to work.
All right, everyone, I got three coats on all the parts that were hanging on the rack, plus a couple of the sheet metal panels. That's diamond white. It's not quite as pronounced of a cream color as Wimbledon white, but it's, it's similar. Um, that's it. That's it for me for the night. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Hopefully in the next one I'll be putting all the parts together. And I'll have the spindles painted by then with the new bushings. I'll have the all my wheel bearings pressed in, the drums painted, and maybe even the rear axle back out of the car so I can get to work on cleaning that up, getting the brakes rebuilt, getting everything painted and put back together so I can get this car back down on all four tires. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.